Americans are getting older, and a lot of them are living longer lives than ever before. More people are reaching 100 or going beyond that. But for those who are having a very healthy senior citizen existence, a lot are succumbing to diseases that, that we shouldn't be. Heart disease, stroke, cancer. Why? Look how many people suffer from kidney disease, diabetes, and fibromyalgia. What's causing us, baby boomers and senior citizens, put together the largest single group in the population, over 150 million of us, why are we so sick? Why aren't we living 120, 130, 150 years in good health? Why do we think that it's something special if we get to be 50 or 55 without having a myriad of conditions? What we're going to do in our program is we're going to explore the phenomena of aging. But we're going to do it from a different perspective. We're going to actually go into the lives of individuals, one as old as 90, most in their 70s, a couple in their 80s, and we're going to see how they have taken lifestyle, exercise, diet, juicing, de-stressing, and have used those to their advantage to reverse the conditions that they were told they'd have to live with forever. I began to feel dizzy. I was drinking 20 cups of coffee a day, and I was using this, of course, putting in the hours and not doing any exercise or getting energy from the food that I was eating. It was all non-energy kind of food. Uh, I was always tired. So to perk myself up during the day, I was making coffee. I had my own coffee maker, and uh, I would make coffee three times a day. I was working from 7 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. So I would make more coffee when I got in in the morning, have another pot or whatever it was at noon, and then when everybody left at 5 or 6, since I was there for another 4 or 5 hours, I made another large uh, pot of coffee. And this was kept me going. <laughs> I had gone to my family physician and was diagnosed with extremely high blood pressure and also he mentioned that there was a very good likelihood that I would have to undergo angioplasty. At that time, I decided that I was not going to follow that route and I was going to look into other ways to correct the condition. Additionally, my macular degeneration condition uh, has been diagnosed by my ophthalmologist as having no loss of vision in the last two years, whereas before that I was losing vision in very small increments, but it was a steadily, steady loss of vision every year. But since I've started the program, my vision has remained stable, and I'm looking forward to not only remaining stable, but getting back some of the vision that I have lost. Today I am 66 years old. My life is just beginning. Stopping, of course, the coffee and the milk and the sugar that came with the coffee. Uh, cutting out meat completely. Cutting out fish completely. Uh, increasing the vegetables. Uh, starting to take the correct kind of supplements. I began to see my energy come back. Uh, not only my energy come back, but my mental energy come back. I began to become more alert and remembering things more. Uh, I began to come down on the amount of hours that I worked. And shortly after that, my wife decided to join a power walking club. Uh, they meet at 7.30 Sunday mornings in the park. So on her first visit there, I said to her, let me go with you. I just want to see what the park is like at 7.30 in case nobody shows up. I don't want you to be there alone. So I went there more or less, first of all, as an observer. No intention at all of joining any kind of a power walking club. I was told after that by the members of the club that if I wanted to and kept to the training, I'd do the 2000 marathon. Now, I looked at them the same way that most people look at me. What do you mean do the marathon? I can't do the marathon. But they said, if you want to do this and you stick to this training schedule, you'll do the 2000 marathon. And I did. And I completed the 2000 marathon. They were right.
Age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, is the number one cause of blindness in the United States. As a matter of fact, 14 million Americans over the age of 40 have signs of AMD. And some of the risk factors include exposure to sunlight, smoking, high blood pressure. There's also a genetic predisposition. But there are things that we can do about it. As a matter of fact, a recent study when patients that were given uh, a cocktail, so to speak, of vitamins, vitamin E, beta carotene, zinc, and copper, were shown that they could actually stop the progression in intermediary uh, type AMD. So that was very, very fortunate. And we know from our studies, where I work at Rockefeller University, that lutein, which is also a carotenoid, similar to beta carotene, found in dark green leafy vegetables and orangey color vegetables, but also can be found in a supplement, is very important in both the prevention and stopping the progression of AMD. So these are very important facts to know. But when looking for a supplement with lutein, you must look for one that contains at least six milligrams. But this is something that can be prevented, even given a genetic predisposition. I would see patients who um, uh, had had bypass surgery uh, and you know, had had really severe cardiac problems and uh, adopted lifestyle changes where they lost 60 pounds, where they began to exercise and do yoga, where they also did emotional healing, uh, and where they turned their risk factor profile around completely. I would see patients at uh, those initial meetings of uh, uh, Nishio Kushi who had severe rheumatoid arthritis, who were able to do incredible yoga postures that I wasn't even able to do at the age of 25. Um, so, you know, wonderful things were happening with diet modification. And this, of course, was the, uh, uh, the 70s and the 80s, and the full potential of, of this movement uh, was uh, being felt. And I would go to places like um, the uh, holistic expos that were held in big cities like Boston and New York, and I would hear exciting speakers like a young fellow named Gary Null uh, exhorting people to uh, follow better lifestyles. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a heady time in the field of, of natural medicine. Things were just sort of coming out of the closet. Heart disease continues to be the number one killer for both men and women. As a matter of fact, somebody dies of a heart attack every 33 seconds. And with the obesity epidemic looming, we have more consequences of cardiovascular disease, which means more heart attacks and strokes. But that's not all doom and gloom, because if we can reduce some of those risk factors, such as lowering our cholesterol, reducing our blood pressure, reducing obesity in general, and lowering our blood sugar, we can do a lot. And we can do that by taking control. And diet is one way to take control, exercise another way. Diet is always the mainstay, lowering fat in the diet, lowering uh, saturated fat in particular is very important. And then looking at the good kinds of fat, such as the omega-3 fatty acids, particularly DHA. That's a very important one that comes from fish. As a matter of fact, at Rockefeller University, we're doing some studies on DHA and finding very good results. Another very important nutrient is magnesium. And women in particular are very deficient in magnesium. A recent study showed that 60 to 70% of women are deficient in magnesium. Where do you get that? You get that in dark green leafy vegetables, get it in whole grains, get it in fish. So go back to the garden is really what we're saying in general for preventing heart disease and so many other diseases as we well know. And I was suffering from chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. That was asthma, emphysema, bronchitis. And uh, I used the inhalers that were full of steroids and I found out later, I don't want to use those steroids. I was taking four puffs orally two times a day of Atrovent, Beclavent, Cerevent, Ventolin. And I was on O2 oxygen around the clock 
from 1992 until June of 2000. When you suggested that I be a vegan vegetarian, I said okay to myself. And then no smoking was all right. And when it came to exercise, Gary, that was a foreign word. You, you don't tell Patsy to exercise. That, that wasn't within my lifestyle whatsoever. My spirit, my being, everything knew I was hearing the truth. I knew it and I knew I could do it. No one could tell me I couldn't. I wasn't that little girl that mother said, no, no anymore. I was in charge of myself. And I chose to do it. And my primary physician said, congratulations, due to your, the way you've been living in your dietary supplements and your spirit within, he says, your lungs are healed. Now, we believe these are normal for aging. For example, think of the conditions that we now accept are age-related illnesses, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, atherosclerosis, diabetes, insomnia, urinary incontinence, prostate enlargement. Also think of things like advanced pulmonary conditions and elevated, uh, elevated triglycerides. These are not normal to aging. In fact, there is no disease normal to aging. I am 72 years old and uh, I still feel great about my life because I am healthy and I enjoy life to my fullest. I attribute this to my physical activity as a young girl when I was interested in playing all kinds of sports such as ice skating, tra track and field, uh, swimming and gymnastics. Welcome back to Oxygen Sports. There certainly isn't a better showcase for a sport than the Olympics. And even though rhythmic gymnastics didn't debut until 1984, it was actually a part of Olympic competition years before that. Artistic gymnasts like Rose Voice from Yugoslavia's 1948 Olympic team used to participate in group rhythmic routines as a part of their team competition. Now, more than 52 years later, she is still embracing the art form. At the age of 15, I focused only on gymnastics and I excelled to the point that I made the Olympic team and competed in, in the 14th Olympiad in London. Two years later, we competed in the World Championship in Gymnastics in Basel, Switzerland, where our team won the silver medal in the rhythmic exercise with the ball hand apparatus. When I ceased to compete, I decided to um, remain healthy and in good shape. So I had to do recreational sports and I continued to live this way until this date. And at this stage and age of my life, I still feel wonderful and enjoy life to my fullest because I have been exercising and uh, eating right and uh, I believe in the Latin motto, men sana in corpore sano, that is a sound mind in a sound body. And that means there has to be a balance between mind and body. If there is no balance, there, the life is incomplete. When I look around, many people particularly at my age, they are already sick or even on the wheelchair or they have all kinds of ailments and all their energy goes into trying to fight the disease instead of enjoying life. So 
this was a wake up call for them then when they find out that they're very ill and this is all these illnesses are preventable if you eat right and exercise and enjoy life there are only three causes of disease in humans genetics the bad genes we inherit from our parents that give us sickle cell anemia Huntington's chorea thalassemia um, then there are environmental causes of disease, which include damage from ultraviolet light, poisons, infections, trauma, murder. And the third and by far the largest group of diseases are diseases of aging. And that's almost every disease that develops after age 25. It includes high blood pressure, most cases of high blood pressure, most cases of high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, degenerative arthritis, dementia, cataracts, cancer, susceptibility to infections. What are we doing wrong? We're going to show you what we're doing wrong, and we're going to show you how to correct it. What causes disease? What causes us to get sick? Now, we've been led to believe that these are kind of mysterious. We don't know what causes arthritis, and we don't know what causes uh, atherosclerosis. We, we have some thoughts that maybe there's some inflammatory process, but we don't we don't give it real detail. Let me tell you what I believe are the primary reasons that we're sick and prematurely aging. First and foremost is inflammatory processes, inflammation, cancer, inflammatory disease, heart disease, inflammatory, Alzheimer's, inflammatory, Parkinson's, inflammatory, multiple sclerosis, inflammatory, uh, emphysema and asthma, inflammatory, and virtually all your itises, endocarditis, encephalitis, inflammatory. Now what that means is this, that free radicals, which are little unpaired electrons in their outer orbit, these free radicals, which are a normal process of living, but really speed up when we exercise, when we smoke, when we drink any form of alcohol in any amount, when we have processed carbohydrates like sugars, artificial chemicals, preservatives and food additives, pesticides, any of these things cause an increase in free radicals. But you can't see free radicals. And their lifespan is only in quarters of seconds. But the difference is there's hundreds of millions every second. When a free radical glomes onto a cell and they have affinity for the fatty tissues in your body, and think of your brain, 40% fat, and dry weight, think of the every single cell in your body has a protective door to it, a sheath, and there's fat in that. Well, when the free, free radical attacks that over and over and over again, it sets up a series of hormones in the body and chemicals in the body, including prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin 2, E2, which in effect turns on the flame, up goes the inflammatory process. Now, the more free radical pathology, it has other names as well, oxidative stress is another one, um, that will cause the cell to start to protect itself. This journey inside the human body takes us through a sea of oddly shaped objects and past living cells with their large centers or nuclei. Plunging into a single cell, we come upon several cigar-shaped mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell. Intertwined in the mitochondria's cristae, or folds, we can just detect a fairly long strand of supercoiled DNA, the building block of life. From outside the mitochondria, we see the invading oxygen-free radicals zoom through the mitochondria's coiled DNA. This oxygen-free radical is a result of normal cell activity. Free radicals are associated with the negative effects of aging and age-associated diseases. As the free radical continues on its journey, we see the paired bases that are part of the DNA. The free radical hits one of the base pairs and severely damages it, distorting the entire DNA segment. The repair enzyme moves towards the site, biochemically repairing the damaged material and returning the DNA to its original shape. Moving back out of the body, we pass through the cell's supercoiled DNA, the cigar-shaped mitochondria, out of the cell and the cell's jelly-like protoplasm to end our journey. Now, if we only have one thing that causes an inflammatory process and we deal with it, fine, the body recovers. But we don't because we include inflammatory processes almost every day in what we do.
because people eat the same foods every day. People stress themselves every day. The hormones in our body are over-secreted. Every time you're anxious, depressed, fearful, anything that's a negative energy speeds up inflammatory processes. My name is Sal D'Amelio. I live in Rosedale, New York, and I'm 90 years of age. Around 1993, 94, 95, uh, I was very unhappy and about some things and rather depressed. And uh, it affected my health. I wasn't eating right and so on. So my friends decided to get me out of that rut. I'm happy and thankful to them that they did. And so I became more and more conscious about regaining my vigor. As an example, depression is certainly one of the most common problems that we see as people age. There are good reasons for it in terms of the circumstances. But there are many people in similar circumstances who aren't depressed. So we look at these patients from the point of view of nutritional deficiencies, very common in the elderly, toxicities, the accumulation of toxic substances over many years can become symptomatic as the years go by. Uh, my major concern with these people is mercury. Mercury toxicity is a slow cumulative poison and when people have a lot of fillings in their teeth for instance they can do very well for a long time but eventually they succumb to the cumulative toxin. We look for allergies, we look for chronic infections and we look for what are known as nutritional dependencies where people require higher levels of nutrients than the recommended dietary allowances in order to function at their optimum. I really would like to enjoy, again, things that I used to enjoy, and things which uh, I had become fairly good at, but never really got good enough to satisfy myself. You see, Part of getting away from depressive situations is to get out there and mix, our, mix with people and mix with a variety of people, people who have a variety of interests. There are many lifestyle factors that correlate with longevity, um, being happy at work, uh, being physically active. Um, being in love also correlates with longevity. Uh, as, as many of us realize, when we're in love, it's a totally different brain chemistry that occurs, and that somehow has very rejuvenating effects on the body, I think probably by helping to lower stress, helping to lower cortisol levels. Um, but, you know, the saying, love is blind, uh, is, has, has come about because of this different brain chemistry. We think differently, we act differently when we're in love with another person. And that does correlate with longevity, both love with a sexual partner and love with family and friends. Um, having this comfort, this support system around you, uh, does help to relieve stress levels and certainly correlates with longevity. We know that as men get older and their testosterone level drops, the further it drops, um, the more f function, the more benefit of testosterone you lose. As it first begins to drop, men begin to lose their, their assertiveness, their aggressiveness. As it drops further, you begin to lose calcium from the bones. Um, as it drops even further, and this is uh, true of men usually in their 60s, 70s, and later, when levels get very low, uh, men have a tendency towards a depressed affect and sometimes outright depression, and also social isolation, which, help, which prevents them from creating the bonds that uh, help lead to love and personal relationships. Happiness can't be bought doesn't come with success, doesn't come with 
fame, doesn't come with accomplishment, doesn't come by working hard, doesn't come by everybody acknowledging you, doesn't come from all the things we told if we do everything right, we will be rewarded with happiness. And from happiness we have balance, from balance we have bliss, from bliss we have a euphoria of life. Why don't we have that? Because we weren't living our own life. If we're really honest, more often than not, we live someone else's life by their expectations of us very well. We work very hard. The one thing no one can say about Americans is that we're lazy. We work real hard. We're very determined. We're very conscientious. We're very ethical and honest in our approach to someone else's existence, not our own. So you want to reverse disease? Be honest to yourself. Now, when we think of glycation, the average person says, what's that? Glycation is when you have proteins and sugar molecules that come together and they create non-functioning compounds. And we see this all the time in people with dementia and Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative conditions. Imagine taking a turkey out of the oven. It's browned. Imagine a, a steak that's been grilled. It's dark. That's glycation. But by the way we live and by all the toxins in our body, we're creating a glycation in our tissue, including in our brain. And that is a primary cause of the diseases of aging. We could reverse that, prevent that, but we have to stop all these animal proteins, the simple sugars in our diet, and have more wholesome, healthy foods. Let's say that this is collagen, your connective cell tissue, and it comes together normally. Now, vitamin C is the single most important nutrient to create new collagen, to hold your skin tight, and to make sure it's healthy. But we're not having enough vitamin C, certainly not enough to both prevent illnesses, to maintain antiviral levels, antibacterial levels, anti-cancer levels, stimulate the immune system, and have enough left over to manifest healthy tissue. So then you're exposed to the sun, smoking, exercise, not taking the right nutrients, and these become distorted, cross-linked. So instead of being like this, healthy, tight skin, it's like that. A healthy body is reflected in a healthy skin. And this is not only important for the appearance of the skin, but also important in uh, healing. If they're uh, a non-invasive technique, uh, like we use to rejuvenate the face and the skin. The particular things that are important include fresh juices and the use of antioxidants. Uh, vitamin C between, uh, between one and five grams a day. Uh, vitamin E between 40 and 60 units a day. Bioflavonoids between 500 milligrams and 2,000 milligrams a day and uh, also glutathione between 200 and 500 milligrams a day. These are some of the things that are very important in the maintaining of a healthy skin and a proper response to healing. We're a nation that suffers from imbalances in fatty acids. For a long time, almost all of our fat came from meat. Well, meat is filled with arachidonic acid in the fat, and that is an inflammatory fat, bad. Then we said, okay, give up the arachidonic acid, go to margarine. Okay, so we did corn margarine or soy margarine, not realizing the process of taking that to a liquid form from a liquid to a hydrogenated form, we were creating fatty acids that were unhealthy called trans fats. Well, trans fats are now linked to heart disease and cancer. That's bad. Americans eat a lot of protein, much more than they really need for their daily requirements. And much of the protein that people eat in the United States is tied in with a high saturated fat content. I mean, the, the protein is in dairy products and in meats. So what we do is tell the people, recommend to people that they cut back on proteins and in that way they can also cut down on the saturated fat. The fats that are the healthiest that prevent this imbalance, which can lead to disease, would be fish oils, the omega-3s, very important. Coconut oil, coconut oil is one of the most powerful, important healing oils. Avocado oil, apricot oil, and olive oil, flaxseed oil. Those are all healing oils. There's a balance between the omega-3 and the omega-6. 
that helps our immune system, they help hormone balance, they help your skin, they help all your different biochemical functions. If you have too many polyunsaturated fats, like from corn oil, you actually speed up the aging process and speed up cancer. That's why you have to have balances. Now, another problem, aside from fatty acid, is, is the problem of digestion. One of the reasons that it's thought that older individuals are more prey to autoimmune diseases is that there is um, an aging and a breakdown in the process of, of digestion and that the normal uh, barriers to the passage of only partially digested food po proteins, and usually these barriers are very intact in young, healthy intestinal tracts. The average American is eating too fast, too many foods, wrong combinations, overly processed, and figuring, well, it all gets broken down and digested. Not true. The stomach does not have teeth. So if you do not masticate your food properly, really chew it thoroughly, it goes in as a chunk into the stomach. Now normally there is a both mechanical process chewing and an enzymatic process. Under the tongue are two little holes that secrete saliva. In the saliva is enzymes that break down this called tylen and amylase. So the more you chew, the more insalivated all that food becomes so that when you finally let it go down into the stomach, it has started already to be digested. Now in the stomach, if you don't have a lot of liquid, and we do, and we have carbonated beverages, the worst thing you can do is have carbonated beverage when you eat, the worst thing. You've got to stop over flooding the stomach with water or juices or caffeine, because what it does is when the stomach gets so full, a little flap at the end of the stomach called the uh, pyloric sphincter opens up that flap and lets food go into the intestine, but it's not fully digested. When you don't have a lot of beverages, then the stomach has a chance to really digest the food properly. And then when it's almost a semi-liquid form, like a thick soup, then it goes in the intestine where it's deacidified. And then as it travels to the intestine, the nutrients are absorbed. Well, let's say you're average American. You're taking one, two bites, down it goes. Carbonated beverages, sugars with fats, it's all in there, and now it takes hours to digest. A fried piece of chicken might take six hours to get out of your stomach. Now think of it this way. Americans don't like to go six hours without eating. So while something like sausage and bacon that will take at least six hours in most cases, and the older you are, the more difficult it is to digest, to get out of your stomach, it's now lunch and you go ahead and eat more food. Now it's dinner and you eat more food. So you always have food backed up. It's just a total mess. That leads to what we call malabsorption syndrome, where even if you took a vitamin, it could go right through you. Even when you have good food, it can go right through you. Only a portion, small portion, gets digested. But what does get into the system that shouldn't are large, incompletely digested particles of food. Now, when this incompletely digested large particle of food goes into the membrane, because now the membrane of the intestine has been challenged, and it's called malabsorption syndrome, or leaky gut syndrome. Nutrients are leaking into the bloodstream that shouldn't be. The body attacks it. Some of these food proteins will pass right through the gut wall, be absorbed into circulation, and will go to various sites in the body where they can literally wreak havoc. They can actually uh, create an immune response. It's as if the body says, oh no, we don't want this present recognizes it as an invader and sets up a defensive response, which is inflammation. So now you end up with the phenomena of having allergic reactions all the time. You're like on 24 hour a day, high alert with your immune system because every second you're eating, foods are being attacked instead of utilized. Treatment for uh, leaky gut involves uh, diet modification to avoid foods that may inflame the intestinal tract uh, the use of probiotics to put good bacteria back in the intestinal tract. If necessary, we may use herbs or even medications to suppress overgrowth of yeast uh, or harmful bacteria, uh, and perhaps digestive enzymes to better break down foods. And there are also some anti-inflammatory substances that we can use to strengthen the gut wall. Uh, amino acids like L-glutamine, for example, will do that. 
and uh, other ordinary vitamins help to uh, rebuild the intestinal lining. Almost 30% of your entire immune system is in your intestines. Why? Because the more toxins you have in your intestines, the more susceptible you are to those toxins leaching in to the main body, out of the gut. When you have toxins that are able to get from your gut into the bloodstream, the body has to now rush to grab that toxin because that toxin, which could be a bacteria, a parasite, a virus, a microbe, can start causing inflammatory processes wherever you're susceptible. It can cause your blood to become septic. In fact, you hear about people dying of infection all the time. Most people who die of cancer in cancer hospitals don't die of cancer per se. They die of inflammatory processes and super infections and because their body no longer has immune response. Maybe the chemotherapy, the radiation, maybe malnutrition, whatever combination it is, the body can no longer defend itself. So that's when we have problems. So the mere fact that you're a school teacher and you're on a high protein diet and you're stressed and you've got a lot of kids in the classroom, what that means is all those bacteria that's in the air. And every time someone breathes, bacteria goes into the air. In fact, if you were to spray a non-toxic bacteria in your mouth and stand right where I'm at and talk in the normal voice that I'm talking, the next day, every square inch of this room would be, contain bacteria from my mouth. One single conversation is enough to fill an entire room with bacteria. Now, if you're healthy, your body takes in that bacteria through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, recognizes it, creates antibodies, and kills it. Juicing and fiber are the first two things we do in the cleansing process. Ten years ago, I had a wake-up call. I had a TIA, which is a mini stroke. The doctors told me that I had a blockage in my right carotid artery, which is 90 to 95% blocked. The doctor said I was a walking time bomb. They suggested that I have an endarterectomy, which is a very serious operation. We made a commitment to follow the program 100% which we did. We stopped eating meat, chicken, all fatty foods, all breads, and we changed our diet to fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, cold water fish, and we bought juicer, and we juiced every day. And I think that the juicing of the organic fruits and vegetables were the most important thing that cleaned out my system. This is 10 years later and I'm fine. I've never had anything wrong with me. See what green juices you enjoy. What ones taste the best? And then dilute them. Always dilute your green juices with aloe vera and spring water. Now two good juices to always have because they're diuretic, they're anti-inflammatory, and they really cleanse are cucumber and celery. They're fabulous for you. Also, you want to use cabbage, especially if you've got any form of gastrointestinal problems. Now, in the cucumber, cabbage, and celery, and aloe, you have to decide how much of each you want. Now, I suggest a 16-ounce glass of juice consumed over a period of an hour. Don't just drink it all down. Sip it. Now, to get the body really starting to cleanse, add some vitamin C up to bowel tolerance. That means you take it up just to where you're going to have a loose stool and then bring it down again and use a buffered vitamin C. We also want to have at least one a day grapefruit whole, juiced skin and seed, lemon, lime, and orange with some bee propolis and aloe vera. That kills parasites and bad bacteria in the intestine one of those a day. We also want a liver flush because the liver is the ultimate detoxification organ of the body. It's what stores the toxins. You can literally have so many toxins in the body, 
that it's oversaturated. And then you end up building up this autotoxemic state. So to cleanse the liver, watermelon juice with lemon. One of those a day. What better way to see if this kind of program works than to talk with people who have followed it? And what they have done is for the past three months, they have been all on the same protocol. They've had a good quality diet, taken the right nutrients and juices and exercise and de-stress and cleaned up their working environment and detoxified their body. Now, at the beginning of the protocol, they had to have a complete evaluation, medical evaluation with blood chemistry and hormone levels. And, and then at the end, they had it taken all over again. So we have good hard objective data before and after. And that is where the story is. Because it's the first time, at least that I'm aware of, in the United States history, that you have a group of individuals who all come together, who are on the same identical protocol. I meet with them once a week for three months. And during that journey of wellness, they can never talk about disease. And I don't even know what they have until the last day. For 15 years, I had Parkinson's disease. I shook like a leaf. And after going through this protocol, right now I'm fine, my hand is steady. I can write quite well. And I'm deeply grateful to Gary for all that he has done. Parkinson's disease is a condition which has previously been thought of as untreatable except through expensive medications, but now we know that dietary supplementation can actually improve and sometimes stop the progression of uh, this condition. Uh, it's important for patients to be on a detoxification diet program, which includes drinking uh, plenty of water, about one to two liters per day, and eating plenty of uh, fresh green leafy vegetables. It's also important that patients focus on certain uh, dietary supplements a recent study showed that high doses of coenzyme Q10, about 1,000 to, to 1,500 milligrams per day, actually stop the progression of Parkinson's disease. For more intensive therapy, I also use glutathione as an intravenous uh, protocol, about 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day. I had fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, and cytomegalovirus. And um, as far as I know, everything seems to have cleared. I couldn't balance myself, my balance was off. I was so exhausted uh, that I would, you know, leave the house and then have to come back again. It got so that I couldn't even put my foot up to get onto the bus. Um, and, um, and now? And now, uh, there's so many other things though. It's uh, Everything is so changed. I, my sleep is wonderful. I sleep like about four hours and I'm ready to go. Um, and now I just, I just feel wonderful. I, I, never, I haven't felt this good since I was 14 years old, I think. And how old and, are you? Uh, I'm 70 years old. So you overcame fibromyalgia, mm. Epstein-Barr yes. virus, yes. fatigue, yes. Um, depression. Or depression, anxiety. Right. A loss of memory. Right. Loss of cognition. Right. So all those are gone. Everything's gone. Good. Oh, I feel wonderful. Well, fibromyalgia is a very, very common condition. If you ask the average American over the age of about 45, uh, do you ache, the majority will say yes. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they all have fibromyalgia, which is a serious achy condition that is associated with considerable fatigue uh, and uh, that often causes people to have difficulty sleeping. But uh, there are tens of millions of people who suffer serious uh, fibromyalgia symptoms, uh, tender trigger points across their body, and a variety of other problems. Um, this is a condition that uh, is in some ways similar to chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, it involves a power failure by the body, and there may, there may be many reasons for that. Uh, in some patients, uh, hormonal abnormalities can make a difference. We see men, for example, who respond beautifully to testosterone administration, uh, and it really relieves their fibromyalgia. Uh, administration of thyroid helps other patients. Uh, other patients respond really well to magnesium and essential fatty acids. Uh, in some patients, the problem may be a food allergy. If they modify their diet and get away from foods that their body is sensitive to, their aches and pains dissipate. Uh, and other patients uh, may simply require more stretching, more yoga, more physical activity, uh, and that's the ticket for them in terms of getting well.
but this is a huge problem. And the way that it's handled conventionally is often with pain medication or antidepressant medication. And that's minimally effective. For 30 years, I've been in chronic pain, fibromyalgia, terrific depression, Epstein-Barr virus, bedridden, and I had no life at all. I heard of this program that was starting. I was very ill at the time I started. It was going to take a lot of traveling for me to, to continue in this program, but I made the commitment. And I came into Manhattan for the 13 weeks. I followed what was suggested. I listened, I did homework, I changed my life. I changed the way I ate. I changed the people that I was involved with. Today, I can say, my life has changed completely. The fibromyalgia is gone. The arthritis is gone. It was there for so many years. The exhaustion is completely gone. I feel so tremendously energized. There aren't enough hours in the day for me. I feel wonderful. Um, I have my life back. Uh, there isn't any more illness. I started to do things I've, I haven't done before. After about six weeks in the program of changing the way I ate, taking supplementation, being around the people and the positive energy that I found at the group, I started to change gradually. I was wearing a size 14 pants when I came in. Uh, because my stomach was so bloated. I've gone from like the 14 pants I'm down to now, uh, size eight pants. I was allergic to all kinds of fabrics. I uh, couldn't wear um, underwear even because of the elastic on the underwear and uh, socks, different kinds of socks. I couldn't wear everything, it had to be cotton and uh, I, uh, I really couldn't shop much for anything uh, because I, w I became so frightened because anything I would bring home or wear, I either had a terrible itch or it was the smell. Uh, I couldn't breathe. And now I'm, it's, it's great. I, I, can, I can go in and, and take something, something in a nine or a 10. And I dress youthful now, which I always was a very individual dresser. And um, I wear what I want now, and I don't look at clothing, you know, well, this is for a 50, 60-year-old woman. If I like it, I buy it, and it's usually something youthful. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to have the freedom to do that. I'm looking forward now to starting my life that I left behind. I had so many dreams. I've opened the drawer that I had all those dreams in when I was 18. I'm on my way. I'm going to touch everything I can touch. The world is brighter. The flowers bloom for me. Everything in the universe says I love you. And I say back, oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Here I am. Make way for me. My fatigue is a lot less and I have more energy. I just ran the New York City Marathon with a lot less training than I did last year. You may be suffering with a fatigue state. However, this can be corrected. There are eight factors which lead to fatigue. Number one, mixed infection syndrome, including multiple viruses, potential parasites and potential yeast, toxicity, heavy metals, food toxicity from pesticides, toxicity from the environment, all affecting the body, cerebral allergy, whereby allergies affect the brain, causing the brain to malfunction,
giving a lower energy state. Hypoglycemia, imbalance of the glucose control system of the body's thermostat leading to major imbalances of glucose level such that when the glucose level falls, the fatigue follows. Low adrenal function. We all have heard of adrenaline, which is the adrenal output. If the adrenals are sluggish and adrenaline is low, we have lower energy. The B complex. Millions of persons are walking around deficient in B complex, and this is a major part of their fatigue state. Separately, B12 is a major component beyond the B complex, commonly low in America and commonly related to the fatigue state. And last but not least, thyroid. Malfunction of the thyroid leads to a generalized fatigue state as well as problems with weight gain, cold intolerance, hair loss, low energy, sluggish bowel, mental function. Arthritis is gone, gout is gone, and periodontis is gone as well. I reversed chronic adult cystic acne. I used to have severe hypothyroidism. I was on the verge of taking medications. So with that, I had a lot of weight gain, a lot of mood swings, all those are gone, all reversed. I had iron deficiency anemia, and I was taking all kinds of supplements that totally reversed now. My iron levels are all normal again. I reversed herpes one and two, hepatitis B. I used to have chronic fatigue syndrome, and all of these things just sap my energy. And now I have lots of energy, I sleep less, I'm doing much, much more in a day than I ever did. I'm sleeping like a baby, never been happier. This program helped me to go through menopause without no symptoms, no, no have flashes, no sweating, no, no anything. I just feel always good all the time. When women go into menopause, there are many symptoms that they have. And the number one symptom, other than hot flashes, is um, inability to sleep. And that's very concerning because when people don't sleep well, they become ill and we really need to find alternatives to treat the symptoms of menopause. Um, it's, it's absolutely important and I think um, what I've done with my patients is I, for many years now I've been using bioidentical hormones which down to the molecular level they're exactly the same as um, our hormones that we lost when we were younger. Um, as opposed to synthetic hormones that are not the same. They're actually molecularly different than what our bodies produce. And what I found is I've never had a problem with any of my patients. Um, I've never, um, actually I, cannot, I can say I've never had a patient develop breast cancer. Um, and we need to do more studies on these bioidentical hormones because we need to find alternatives. We need to find ways to treat the symptoms of menopause because they can be, the quality of life is, can be horrible. Too much estrogen imbalances progesterone. Progesterone is there to equalize estrogen to prevent cancer. High protein diet, up goes the estrogen, no protection from progesterone. Stress, stress creates cortisol, a hormone that blocks progesterone. Now you got high protein diet, you're overweight, and you've got stress then you've just put yourself into a cancer-creating mode. De-stressing turns off the cortisol. Vegetarian diet brings down the estrogen. Phytoestrogens from soy, tempeh, tofu, you cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, dandelion, mustard, radishes, cabbage, put the healthy estrogens into the tissues and protect us from the dangerous estrogens. Now, the things that women are not using in our society to help balance hormones, dong kwai, fo tai, passion flower, motherwort, squaw vine, they're used in other societies with enormous benefit. Get rid of the sugars, get rid of the refined carbohydrate. We're addicted to these tastes as a result, we end up with obesity. The more heavy we are, the more fat we have, the more toxins are in the fat. We're just like walking toxic time bombs, human septic systems. There have been uh, some pretty good epidemiological evidence to suggest that, uh, for instance, overweight may be related to 
breast cancer in postmenopausal women, uh, also to endometrial cancer in women, and to colon and, and prostate cancer in men. Now, it's unclear what about obesity causes this increased prevalence of these cancers. Is it something in the diet that people take who are overweight? Is it the calories that they take? Is it the fat in their diet? Is it the protein in their diet? Or is it a specific component of the protein? All this is unknown. What we recommend that people do is to cut their fat intake to about 30% of total calories and uh, to have no more uh, than 7% of the calories from saturated fat and to cut their cholesterol down to 300 milligrams a day. Now, how do you cut out s some of the saturated fat? Well, the saturated fat in our diet in the U.S. is, in, is primarily in meats and in animal fats, uh, butter, lard, meats, and uh, dairy products. Since I started Gary's program, which in my life dates back some years, I've discontinued wheat products, dairy products, sugar. I've been a vegetarian for close to 30 years. My weight had gone up from 140 to 152 pounds, and I, this disturbed me greatly. And since I was running into Gary, I said to Gary, uh, I've got all this weight. What could I do about taking it off? Then he said, are you serious? And I said, yes. We started on a salad for lunch and a salad for dinner and a regular breakfast. And uh, each day it got a little easier and easier. And I wasn't hungry. The thing that astonished me that I wasn't hungry. I lost 26 pounds way back in the 70s. I've never put on any weight of the 26 pounds that was lost. And today I'm about 115. And I attribute this only to my change in my lifestyle, the eating habits that I established when I listened to the protocol. And I said, that's right, I could do that and it's much easier. The detox that uh, is part of Gary's program and it's beginning to work on me, I must say, which also made me very happy. The, uh, I could see results now coming. And that, and now I could understand why he said program may be for six months, it may take you a year or two years before the body starts to react. And there it was, it's happening to me now. So imagine now without thinking of age, how I'm improving. I was having pain in my back and I felt that it was because of the tightness of my muscles and that I was starting to loosen them. And I told the doctor, and he said, well, let's try physical therapy. Rose came to me about six weeks ago with complaints of low back pain, legs pain, stiffness in her neck and her shoulders, difficulties in transferring from one position to the other, ambulating. And the main thing was some amount of pain and stiffness. And basically what I did with Rose uh, was using different methods of physical therapy. Uh, one of them is hands-on technique, where you go gently and mobilize the soft tissue of the person. And then I went to do very gentle joint mobilization, where I mobilize the hips, the, the back, the, the knees, the ankles, and whichever joint is involved in the stiffness. We work on the back and then we roll on the side and we, I approach the joints from very different angles and try to help with mobilization of the soft tissue, which is the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, and the joint themselves and the vertebrae. And uh, as we continue, we roll from side to side, then we learn how to transfer from one position to the other and making sure that she's feeling comfortable in each and every position and helping her to ease the pain release the stiffness and teach her how to exercise by herself. This is one very important element. When you teach the person how to exercise and how to maneuver their own body gently, securely and correctly. And the moment I met her I felt this wonderful energy that she had. Her gentleness 
and her caring. She works with visualization. I don't see things as a picture, but I think things as they are. And when she started with the visualization, and she said, breathe into your, where the soft spot is. As you breathe out, you're going to... I incorporate into the regular therapeutic exercise, which I consider more conventional physical therapy, I incorporate more of guided imagery, the way the person sees and thinks about themselves. I can introduce different images or guide them throughout to screen the body, feel different restriction in the body by me just introducing or stimulating and they give me the real picture of how they feel the body from inside. The new yoga that I was introduced to about two weeks ago gave me another feeling of what the body needs and how it works with the gentle yoga positioning and then meditation with the gong. When the class is over, the body is so relaxed. You just feel like you're floating. One of the visually impaired persons in my support group was Jim Rooney. And Jim called me one day to say that Visions as a class for women's fitness. He said, and I know you're interested. Vision Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired is a nonprofit agency in New York City that's been around for 76 years. We work with people of all ages who are blind and visually impaired, providing rehabilitation training, recreation, and social services. Visions at Sellis Manor is located in Manhattan in Chelsea. We've been here for two years, providing community-based recreation and social services for adults and seniors who are blind and visually impaired. We have a range of services from support groups, braille instruction, and a fully adapted computer training uh, center, um, fitness classes ranging from yoga to karate to general fitness, bowling, uh, just a whole range of services for people who are blind and visually impaired. I remember way back in the 80s when Gary was talking about exercise, and I said, well, you know, it sounds all right, but it's not for me. I remember being down in Tioga, Texas, and a young lady doing exercise, and, and she said, this is only seven minutes a day, and it's wonderful. And mentally, I said to myself, it's not for me. And then suddenly, one day, in one of the support groups in the class that I attended, it suddenly clicked. Exercise, you need the exercise. And I went, I registered for the class, and it's been a blessing. I feel that I'm being guided. I don't walk in fear. I walk the streets of the city of New York with no fear. I live in the moment, and when I'm in the moment, then I don't think of anything else until that part is finished and I'm ready to do the next thing. And I think that has been a great help for me because it all comes from within. Listening to Gary, and I listen to him almost every single day, and hearing things, I hear things, and they, they stay within me. I may be 88, but I'm also a child. So I'm childlike, and I have the wisdom of age. I would like to be able to continue what I'm doing and to improve it each day. I talk to friends who are homebound and wheelchair people. I have to count my blessings. If I learn something new each day, I'm happy. I was on my way here and someone said to me, you're so happy today. He said, I could feel that you're happy. I said, yes, I am happy. And why was I happy? Because things were going smoothly. There were a little, couple of little bumps and the bumps disappeared once the happiness came in. And, th and that's my life. That's my daily life, one day at a time. How do you actually reverse the aging of damaged DNA that we're told can't be changed? Wrong. 
We were told you can't change an aging brain. Wrong. We were told you can't change an aging heart. Wrong again. We can change everything if we know the key to that door. And what's the key? Phytochemicals. Clean the liver, clean the intestine, clean the blood. How? Start your morning with some orange juice, lemon juice, lime juice, grapefruit juice, raw honey, aloe vera, vitamin C. That cleanses the blood. Have cabbage juice for your intestines with fennel in it. That's great for any form of problem in there. Probiotics, healthy bacteria, non-dairy acidophilus and bifidus bacteria. Replenish the good bacteria and minimize the bad bacteria in your intestines where a lot of disease occurs. So we're cleaning up our intestines. Garlic cleans it up, onion cleans it up, caprylic acid cleans it up, grapefruit seed extract cleans it up, good acidophilus cleans it up, and lots of green juices. Green juices flood the body with the phytochemicals that will cleanse the body, help take toxic heavy metals out of the system, and then repair DNA. Now, the red fruits, watermelon, blood oranges, pink grapefruit, papaya, mangoes, pomegranate, cherries, raspberries, strawberries. These all contain phytonutrients that can repair the damage to the DNA when they take it in adequate amounts. Now, not everybody can take a lot of juices because they may have elevated blood sugar, but you can take those that have low glycemic index that don't spike the blood sugar, like your berries. And there are powders out there that you can take that are concentrates of the juice. 99% of most juice is water. You eliminate the water, you got the 1% that's really active. And if it doesn't have the sugar, then you're flooding the body with those healing nutrients. So we're taking in that which cleanses the body and chelates out metals and helps the body fight virus and bacteria, turns off inflammatory processes. Then we're going on there in there to heal. Vitamin C, the number one healing nutrient. Aloe vera, number one healing herb. So we're healing the body from years of drinking the coffee and the caffeines and the other things that have made a difference, negative difference. Lots of water also floods the body and helps. Take digestive enzymes after a meal to make sure your body is actually digesting food. Anxiety is probably the most common problem presenting in doctor's offices. All sorts of anxiety exist. There's generalized anxiety where a person is possessed with a lot of different symptoms. Could be anywhere from palpitations to increased PMS to insomnia to tingling in the hands and feet to sweating uh, to just a general sense of nervousness or dread or feelings of dread. Individuals with anxiety can present with almost anything. Uh, unfortunately, it can also be caused by almost anything. Some individuals will have thyroid disorders. Some individuals will have uh, imbalances in estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and other hormones. Other reasons for anxiety include changes in vascular blood flow. Many individuals ask me, is my anxiety psychological or is it brain chemical? Individuals with severe brain chemical imbalances will have almost like mini seizures on a brain electrical activity map. That's why drugs like Valium that are used by conventional doctors to treat anxiety can also be used for mood swings, as we know Ativan and Clonopin are, or they can be used for migraine, such as Depakote, seizure. The same drugs for seizure are used for seizure, migraine, headache, chronic anxiety states, alcoholism, and addiction. It turns out the brain can go out of rhythm, and so we can distinguish between out of rhythm that's severely medical versus out of rhythm that might be due to a death in the family, disappointments at work and career, children, uh, or just the general state of the world that could make almost anybody anxious. So we have to make a distinction what's medical, what's psychological. But once we decide it's medical, we have a lot of great options. From the hormonal area, some of the most common hormonal treatments uh, can be growth hormone, which kind of make individuals feel steadier and stronger. Progesterone in women in particular can make them calmer and more level. And we also have nutrients like inositol. And we have amino acids like branch chain amino acids, which are calming in the brain. And the uh, small amino acid that lowers blood pressure called taurine. And probably more central even is the use of an electrical device called the CES device. The idea is you can send an ocean wave up on the sand of your brain 
and when it comes back, it smooths all the sand or all the little circuits that have gone out of whack. It can smooth them all out. So the CES device, a cranial electrical stimulation device, becomes a cornerstone of everyone's anxiety. So we try to figure out how much is hormonal, how much is medical, how much is psychological, how much is nutritional, and then treat based on the facts so that you can have a lasting relief and a calm mood. A typical protocol for chronically anxious patients are individuals using inositol anywhere from two to four grams three times a day. Some individuals will only need 600 milligrams or 500 milligrams twice a day just to be on a more even keel. But inositol is the brain's natural valium or alcohol and does calm the brain down. Individuals can take up to 12 grams and side effects are fairly limited. Sometimes you'll get loose bowels with inositol. It may even be potentiated if you take the amino acid uh, glycine or GABA or some of the branch chain muscle building amino acids in dosages of one to two grams. Many individuals with chronic anxiety states simply have to just change their overall diet to eat a little bit more carbohydrates and less caffeine and stimulants that might make them roused. Keep in mind that individuals when they're anxious will eat too much sugar, so cut it back when you're feeling anxious. Diseases like rheumatoid arthritis are uh, autoimmune diseases. And one of the facts about autoimmune diseases is they're relatively uncommon in primitive, so-called primitive societies uh, who are eating natural diets. And the thought is, is that we may be doing it to ourselves with our diet, uh, our lifestyle, uh, certainly the effects of the additives that we find are uh, working our way into our diets and, and our water and our air, uh, and that these things may be contributing to a breakdown of the immune system such that the immune system attacks itself. That's the essence of an autoimmune disease. Uh, so our approach to dealing with patients with uh, autoimmune diseases is to radically change their diet, to ascertain if there are any foods that may be acting as irritants, a model for dealing with rheumatoid arthritis is to get people back to what we would call a paleolithic diet, which is the diet of our Stone Age forebears. And that may be a diet that eliminates modern foods. Modern foods include things like wheat, dairy. These are relatively new foods introduced into the human food supply. Osteoporosis, or loss of bone mass, can be a debilitating disease. As a matter of fact, it's one reason that people have to have assisted living. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that you actually reach your peak bone mass by the time, particularly women uh, that are at around age 16 to 20, and then bone loss will exceed bone formation. But one thing that we can all do is get enough calcium and vitamin D, which actually enhances the absorption of calcium so that we can reduce that loss. And then there's a sharp decline in bone loss around the age of menopause. So all of us really need to be screened. One thing that a lot of people also don't realize is that men catch up around the sixth, the seventh decade, and they do have also a sharp decline. Now the end stages of that bone loss would be fractures. That would include fracture of the wrist, fracture of the spine or the vertebral bodies, and also fracture of the hip. Now those that suffer a hip fracture, only one third will be able to go back to normal activities. And about 20% will actually die of complications of that hip fracture. So it's so very important to prevent osteoporosis. Include garlic and onions in your diet. Or garlic is an antimicrobial. It's good for uh, gastrointestinal health. And uh, also uh, foods that contain sulfur, sulfur, like garlic, are good for healthy bones. Okay, so that, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's logical. And, uh, and again, you can find this out on your own by doing some reading, and I encourage the patient to do their own reading when it comes to food. Okay. Uh, and to, the other thing that I want to talk about is avoiding yeast products. Yeast products because uh, phosphorus, which uh, competes, competes with calcium, and yeast products uh, uh, contain false, uh, phosphorus, okay, and it competes with uh, calcium. Healing is also cleansing. 
So we have to get in the idea of cleansing. We cleanse our car, we cleanse our clothes. We cleanse the outside of our body, but we don't cleanse the inside. We clean the engine in our car more frequently than we do the inside of this body. Now think of that. Think of what happens when you have something you can at least look at. Earwax building up interferes with your hearing. Think of plaque between your teeth. We clean it. But what about your intestine, your bloodstream, your liver? We never think about it, and we now have to. The best way of cleansing is a high-fiber diet, about 50 grams a day, from fruits and vegetables and grains and nuts and seeds. Living foods, vitalism. Vital foods mean vital energy. And what's the one thing that Americans of all ages suffer from? Lack of vitality, lack of energy. And the more diseases you have, the less energy you have. Speak with anyone who's sick, and the first thing they'll say is, I don't have the vitality. And they'll say, well, because you're getting old, you're 50, you're 60, you're 45. No, it's not aging that causes deficiency in the mitochondria, which is the little energy factory. It is doing the wrong things that then don't feed that energy into the body. Coenzyme Q10, the best single thing for your heart and your brain. L-carnosine for your brain's energy. Phosphatidylcholine for your brain's energy. Acetyl L-carnitine, phosphatidylserine. These are nutrients, like ginkgo also, that directly increase the neuron activity, energize the cell in the brain, and protect the brain. Best single nutrient for the brain is melatonin. That's what you secrete when you sleep, but most people as they age are not sleeping right, so they're not secreting enough of this melatonin from the pineal gland to protect themselves from free radical damage to the brain. The more free radical damage to the brain, well, then you're going to have dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other problems. So by stopping what's causing it, starting to take things in that reverse it, cleanse with a high fiber program, start your day with some blueberries and strawberries, cleanse the intestine. Finish at night with some a fiber drink, cleanse the intestine. Have foods in that are known to turn off the viruses and bacteria that reside in all of us, to trap them and destroy them, like garlic and onions and cayenne. These are natural things that are easy to do. We're just not eating enough garlic and onions in our diet or taking cayenne. And we're not taking the antioxidants in any measurable amount. And we're not eating the nuts for our heart, like walnuts for the heart and almonds for cancer. And we have to do that as well. Alzheimer's, or what we now uh, attribute to as a generalized description of memory loss. This is a condition that frightens everyone, particularly in the age of stem cells, in the age of new natural hormones, and our knowledge of physical fitness, we have the possibility of extending the life of the body for a very long time, but there's a problem. By age 40, according to brain research and brain mapping studies, most individuals start to lose speed in the brain, and the brain doesn't think quite as fast. By age 50, the energy in the brain starts to go down, so people start to gain a lot of weight. In age 60, most women have already begun to loss significant amounts of memory, particularly if they do not have menopausal treatments. By age 70, men have caught up in terms of memory loss, and they've begun to develop some significant memory problems. And by age 80, almost everybody has a thinking problem, and half of America has Alzheimer's. Now this would sound sad, except we have good news. We now know virtually all the bases for why people develop this Alzheimer's, just like we know why people develop high blood pressure, and it takes 20 to 40 years to develop the Alzheimer's, so you can prevent Alzheimer's the same way you're preventing osteoporosis, high blood pressure and stroke, and all the age-related diseases by recognizing the earliest stages. What we can do is we begin to realize that if your memory is starting to go, and you're starting to have memory problems, there are natural hormones like natural estrogen, natural progesterone, natural testosterone for women, natural testosterone, and maybe someday even a pinch of natural estrogen for men that have a significant impact on memory. So does growth hormone. Growth hormone is now easy to take. You can take one shot per month, and this is very helpful in memory, helping the neurons or dendrites make more connections. In addition, if it's a memory problem due to blood flow into the brain, there are ways of cleaning out the arteries with chelation, niacin, lowering cholesterol. If the kidney is not filtering toxins, there are ways of improving the kidney's performance because most people do not filter all the toxic metals and chemicals as they get older. 
In addition, there are core nutrients such as uh, choline, uh, there is carnitine and acetylcarnitine, and electrical stimulation to the brain that will keep it moving fast and on target. Many individuals also use anti-aging compounds like aldeprol and natural herbs like rhodiola and basically use it or lose it is the motto with the brain but the key is to have the motivation to use it. So we can build up natural dopamine in the brain so you can use it. We can build up natural acetylcholine and basically we believe now that the life of the brain can be extended way beyond the current 80 years old where most people have significant loss. Sure, there's some people that do, much, uh, do well after 80, but it's very few. And so now we know that the body will be able to live longer and someday the brain as well. The Alzheimer's protocol is one that should be done based on scientific evidence. There is many, way, many ways to develop Alzheimer's. Is it blood flow? Is it electrical speed loss? Is it hormonal loss? But a general principle protocol can be described. It will include supplement of the sex steroids or sex hormones in men and women, testosterone for men, natural estrogen, natural progesterone, testosterone for women. It will mean some type of blood flow enhancer such as niacin or red yeast like cholestin. It will mean as a general rule some type of amino acid precursors to the neurotransmitters. If you're not sleeping well enough, tryptophan and uh, precursors. If you need more energy, dopamine precursors like tyrosine. Uh, if you're not thinking well enough, choline precursors. If you're having other health problems, we, you have to treat them. Any medical condition can affect the brain and memory. So preventing Alzheimer's means total health medicine, neurology, psychiatry, internal medicine, nutrition, all nicely combined to prevent brain aging. The most important thing, the research that I've read, uh, shows that uh, consumption of aluminum, heavy metal, okay, which we all consume, uh, maybe people that are 80, for an example, uh, ate with a lot of uh, aluminum cookware, you know, and uh, that's something that is, is really, really important. Do not cook with aluminum. I don't care if you love your pots. Okay? Uh, if you have a pot that's coated, Okay, and it has an underlying uh, coat of aluminum and, and the, the top of the uh, coat gets scratched, aluminum, throw it out. Okay? Because that's a high degree of toxicity in the body for some reason. It affects neurological functioning. And what I do when a person manifests with, with Alzheimer's, I right away go for a liver detox. Okay? And there's a kind of herb, for example, Smilex is used quite often in Chinese medicine. It bonds to a point with heavy metal. Now you can take, uh, you know, you can take uh, toxicity tests from the blood, which are fairly accurate, hair samples, which uh, are accurate but not to that degree, uh, and you know, from a biochemical basis uh, or a diagnostic basis, we can find out what heavy metals are in the body. And what I do is when a person comes in with a uh, disorder such as Al Alzheimer's, uh, uh, I try to heighten a person's uh, awareness of the effects of meditation. I feel that that is really, really important. Uh, the detox is, is, is really important. Uh, getting a person to take a look at same, some of the lifestyle sources that may have contributed to this. Uh, that's, uh, you know, th these are the things that, uh, that I do with my patients. Uh, it's, it's very, very common in this society. My depression has lifted. My lymphedema has also been controlled without the lymphedema machine. And I also have uh, uh, energy that I never had before. My blood pressure is normal. Cholesterol is normal. And a recent EKG, my doctor said, Excellent. Many things have changed in my life. I have a different outlook. I uh, lost uh, an incredible amount of weight, over 100 pounds, in just a, f a short few months. My cholesterol came down by 50 points. Uh, I went from a condition of no self confidence and depression to a uh, where things seemed to be lifting. 
And there's moments of spontaneity and some moments of flexibility and fluidity that are absolutely astounding. If we can show that people had major illnesses that were never treated by this protocol, this is just a wellness protocol, this is a vitalism protocol, this is a lifestyle protocol, and if they changed it, measurably changed it, and enough people think of what that means. I'm going to be 79 in December. I regard it as an extra time to make whatever contributions I can to the benefit of my fellow human beings. Now, I've lived a life in the academic world as a teacher at all levels from elementary school through graduate school. I am an author, I, and I continue to teach actively and vigorously because there is so much that I want to do, and I see it as both an opportunity and, as I said, an obligation. Life is certainly not ended at any predetermined uh, point. I regard my body as a temple. And as a temple, it is therefore not to be defiled. Now, I've done my share, um, doubtedly, during my years of living, of defiling like everybody else. But I, early on, came to the realization of the relationship between healthful living and quality of life. And I am thoroughly convinced that irrespective of whatever age you reach, that is a philosophy that continues to apply. And so, whether I be 60 or 50 or 30 or 90, healthful living is to me the key. Life is more than just the physical. Life is as well the spiritual. And to be able to combine those two philosophies into a lifestyle is for me what makes for the fact that at nearly 80, I am still able to move around and do the kinds of things that I'm doing. So what have we learned? We have learned that a group of individuals who were suffering from menopausal symptoms to dementia to Parkinson's disease and heart disease and diabetes and fibromyalgia and asthma and depression, overweight, across the board were able, just with lifestyle and behavior, to change all that. Now, I'm not promising miracles or cures, but these are real people with real conditions that are no longer there or substantially improved. If they did it, you can do it. And the first step in our journey of wellness and healing is awareness. Without awareness, we have the power to make change and a positive attitude and a strong spirit. I'm Gary Nall. Thank you very much for watching. In summary, an integrative approach to hypertension would include a combination of conventional medicines uh, that um, are capable of uh, inducing vasodilation, um, angiotensin receptor blocking agents and ACE inhibitors uh, are probably preferred, and an array of um, alternative modalities, primarily antioxidants, um, that have as an end product nitric oxide, a very effective vasodilator. Um, vitamin C, vitamin E, um, selenium, dimethyl sulfoxide, and medications put together by Dr. Revisi that um, are based on various combinations of magnesium, copper, sulfur, and certainly selenium, which was one of his favorite, have been effectively used in managing not only the blood pressure, but mostly the complications of prolonged hypertension. Cancer is on the rise. And more and more women are concerned about breast and ovarian cancer and men are concerned about uh, prostate cancer and there's ways to prevent those. For women it's important for them to understand why breast and ovarian cancer occurs and really it has to do with the estrogen is uh, the big problem. If women get if women have too much estrogen in the body it can stimulate breast cancer and ovarian cancer ovarian cells to multiply and 
eventually turn into cancer. So the approaches that I take to helping to prevent breast and ovarian cancer in women is to help, first of all, decrease the amount of estrogen that the body is seeing, uh, and also to help to the woman to metabolize the estrogen into healthy byproducts. And the ways to do that are to naturally decrease the estrogen in the body, women should be on the right type of diet. And the type of, type of diet that works really efficient, effectively is to eat uh, foods that have a lot of antioxidants, like red and yellow vegetables. Uh, also, cruciferous vegetables are essential to help decrease estrogen levels. Uh, it has a, a component in it called indole-3-carbonyl. Uh, many people know it as I3C. And what that does is it actually helps to bind the estrogen in the body and turn it into a healthy byproduct, so it has much less estrogen, estrogenic activity. Also, uh, women need to be very careful about the types of food protein sources they eat. Beef is notoriously treated with hormones and same with chicken treated with hormones to help to increase the size of the, tish, the, the meat production. So when women eat inorganic beef, they're actually also increasing the amount of estrogen that they're putting into their body. So organic food is very important. Syndrome X gained uh, wide publicity, unfortunately, because we have epidemic of obese people. We have a lot of, I think 25% of the population is overweight and 85% is eating what you're not supposed to eat. And the problem is that sooner or later, you're gonna develop a condition, what's called diabetes mellitus. You know, we have two diabetes, two classification, type one, when your beta cell is not secreting insulin, it's juvenile onset, and type two, it's when you have insulin resistance. What is insulin resistance and what you can do to stop it? If you'll be eating the um, uh, right amount of food, if you'll be controlling your hormones, if you'll be getting enough supplements to help your pancreas to combat insulin resistance, it's going to be much better for you. With time, when you're eating uh, food loaded with the carbohydrates, you promote the insulin secretion and circulation. At the beginning, every, the hormonal health is absolutely fine. Then, with the time, receptors got saturated and they don't feel the insulin load. So, in this case, you have a lot of insulin and you have a lot of glucose. And it's not enough for the insulin to boost glucose in the muscle, so you have glycotoxicity. It's going to be okay for one, for two, for three years, but sooner or later, you're going to develop diabetes. And there's going to be heart problems, it's going to be hypertension, it's going to be problems with the eye, it's going to be nephrotoxicity, it's going to be neurotoxicity. And in this case, you'll be able to get um, a lot of disease and a lot of beauty just to get m modern med medical care 24-7. The thing is that with the time, your insulin receptors are getting saturated, so you don't feel that the glucose is doing the job. The glucose is not going to the muscles, and in this case, your glandular health all over get damaged. We have problems with the thyroid, because sooner or later, you're going to get thyroid deficiency. You're going to have sluggish or underactive thyroid. And in this case, you're going to have problems like being weak, sluggish, fatigue. You're going to have poor memory, poor concentration, and you're going to get foggy thinking, especially when you get eat high carb, um, carbohydrate loaded meat. You're going to feel that um, you are gaining weight. You're going to feel like you'll be getting at least 800 calories and it's going to be low fat but carb loaded food and then you'll see that the weight is again crippling up. The thing is that we have a lot of hormonal problems in the body. It's not only insulin problem and it's not only insulin glucose ratio what gives you um, problems. The minute the insulin is not um, going the job properly, we have a cortisol and this hormone, kind of death hormone, creates a lot of problems and the sugar is going sky high. So in order for you to stay healthy, you have to keep your hormonal health, uh, hormonal health in balance. Here are the nutrients that help you to balance yourself uh, naturally. First, think of soy and think of soy of the right estrogens. 
Don't forget about the apples because remember, apple a day keeps a doctor away. Why? Because 17 beta estradiol loaded in apples. And if you're going to eat it, you're going to feel much better. Don't forget about Don Kwai. Don't forget about black cohosh. Don't forget about the Remy Femin. It's um, clava derived estrogen. Don't forget about the B complex. Don't forget about magnesium. Don't forget about calcium. This all medications, natural beauty, going to help us to stay as young as we want. And definitely, don't forget about um, hormones, especially BHE natural ones, what's going to help you look very attractive, alert, with nice skin, with healthy glow, with nice mucous membranes. I'm talking about eyes, I'm talking about vaginal health, I'm talking about things what you've been caring about all your life. So now, if you're going to get this stuff done, you're going to feel like you're young again. Concerning menopause, well, why, why would we treat menopause when women are suffering with insomnia and depression and vaginal dryness, in a, inability to have intercourse because it's painful, we need to treat it. Um, there are many different ways to do this. The conventional treatment, as we've all recently found out, um, have negative side effects. So what can we do with alternative treatments? Well, there are herbs that we can take, such as um, Vitex, which is also known as chaste berry, Dong Kwai, black cohosh. There's natural diuretics, such as Uba Ursi, that um, these help mild menopausal symptoms, especially hot flashes. And if that's not enough, the next step we can go are natural hormone replacement or bioidentical hormone replacement. These, this, what this means is replacing hormones with the molecularly identical um, hormone that our bodies produced when we were younger. And it, it's all about balancing them and getting them to the proper levels of when we were younger. One of the first things I'll start women on for menopausal symptoms like hot flashes is black cohosh, which has estrogen-like qualities, but it works in a way to actually help to decrease the estrogen in the body and increase the uptake of the estrogen at the receptor level, which in turn decreases the symptoms. Uh, and there have actually been a number of studies on black cohosh for hot flashes. Uh, the product, there's actually a product that had a lot of studies done that people can get over the counter. Also a Chinese herb called Dong Kwai. It also goes by an American name called Angelica sinensis. That uh, herb is very effective, but it needs to be used with caution and under a physician's close supervision because it can cause certain uh, bad side effects, like affect liver function. The other thing that's really important is vitamin E, which helps. It's not an herb, but it does help with uh, uh, the symptoms of hot flashes. Prostate cancer can be treated and prevented with natural medicine by addressing the mental, emotional, and physical causes of prostate cancer. On the physical level, the best treatment is saw palmetto herb, a well-known herb that should be used in a high dose, such as one tablespoon twice per day. Used at this dosage one month on and one month off, a man can basically assure himself of prostate health. On the emotional level, I recommend men in their 60s and 70s realize they were raised in an era where the emotional needs of children were not really taken into account. Underlying emotional imbalances can affect the immune system. On the mental level, I recommend men evaluate themselves for a self-sacrificing nature. A self-sacrificing nature is one of the major causes, in my experience, of cancer and should be addressed. And quite simply put, the highest incident of prostate cancer is among Catholic priests. So I recommend men have a healthy sex life to the highest extent possible to prevent and treat prostate health and prevent prostate cancer. The herbal supplement that is useful for helping to prevent and treat prostate cancer is uh, called lycopene. And it's derived from tomatoes. It can, it's found in very high uh, levels in tomato paste and uh, some people advocate taking about a teaspoon of tomato paste to get the lycopene needed. It can also be uh, derived from nutritional supplements that can be uh, found at uh, many health food stores. Hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar, is found in many Americans. It's a, really a complex set of symptoms that uh, lead to the diagnosis. And it's caused by the typical American diet, which is high in refined sugar and carbohydrates. Hypoglycemia occurs because 
of the body's response to sugar. And essentially, that is creating too much insulin in response to the high quantity of sugar and simple sugars that are in today's American diet. So really, the, f the most important thing when determining how to treat low blood sugar is talking about diet. Also, it's really important to know the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And those include dizziness, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, anxiety, depression, and irritability. Craving sugar is a frequent sign of having hypoglycemia. And that afternoon fatigue that people usually get two to three hours after the lunch meal is almost pathognomonic of having low blood sugar. When one diagnoses a, blood, a low blood sugar, it can be done with a routine fasting blood sugar. And if that's found to be less than 50, that's definitive of having hypoglycemia. But a functional test, which is really effective for people that are on the borderline of low blood sugar, is called a five-hour insulin and glucose tolerance test. That uh, test measures how bodies respond responds to a, a load of sugar to the body, and then blood tests are taken to measure the insulin and sugar response. And depending on what is found, that can really be beneficial at showing hypoglycemia. The treatment for hypoglycemia is really uh, by dietary measures. And once a person understands what causes the hypoglycemia, it's very easy to follow a diet that can help prevent the symptoms. Essentially, avoid all sugar and refined carbohydrates, and definitely avoid alcohol. By doing so, the blood sugar in the, in the body remains very constant. It doesn't fluctuate so much. That prevents the body from creating a lot of insulin, which is needed to absorb sugar and then can frequently cause a rapid drop in blood sugar. Blood sugar is essential for proper brain function, so it needs to be maintained at a certain steady level. Everybody knows what happens when you get too high blood sugar, and that's a, simp a diagnosis called diabetes. If the blood sugar goes too low, it can cause very uh, terrible symptoms, and that's hypoglycemia. In order to maintain a person's blood sugar at the right level, it's extremely important to eat carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, protein, and fat all at the same meal. Human body was meant to eat all three nutrients at the same time. And for people with hypoglycemia, it's important to find the carbohydrate zone. And that's the, the amount of carbohydrates that will help to keep the blood sugar stable. So that means that if a person eats too much or too little carbohydrates, that can cause hypoglycemia. And the, the right amount of carbohydrates need to be eaten with the right amount of protein and fat. Foods that people should generally try to focus on are protein, which can be eggs, uh, certain types of uh, milk or yogurt, if people are not sensitive to them. Also fish and chicken, uh, free range chicken, are very good sources of protein. Uh, in addition to that, uh, types of fats are essential at maintaining blood sugar. Monounsaturated fat in the form of olive oil, or polyunsaturated fats that can be found in fish, but also in certain supplements uh, like essential fatty acids or fish oil, and also flaxseed oil can be taken to help maintain blood sugar. Also uh, refined, also different types of uh, vegetables like avocado, tomatoes, broccoli, kale, spinach, bok choy, are very important to eat along with proteins and fat in helping maintain blood sugar. Carbohydrate sources like amaranth, quinoa, spelt, whole grains all will help to maintain blood sugar because if they haven't been refined, they won't cause that dramatic increase in blood sugar that, that will eventually lead to a low blood sugar state. Once a person identifies the foods that the, the proper carbohydrate zone, then they will be able to maintain their a very healthy state of health, prevent those frequent changes in blood sugar that cause the symptoms of hypoglycemia. 
In addition, certain supplements are essential at helping to maintain blood sugar like chromium, 200 to 400 micrograms two times a day, and fiber at a f of both soluble and insoluble fiber. About 50 grams per day help to, to maintain a person's blood sugar and also metabolize the sugar that's in the blood. It's important to recognize the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and to treat them through the proper dietary measures and supplements. When a person is diagnosed with arthritis, it's essential at making sure that there's no underlying cause. Causes of arthritis can include infections like Lyme disease, Bartonella, Babesia, Ehrlichia, and sometimes parasites as well, that if present, can be treated and completely eliminate a person's arthritis symptoms. Food allergies are strongly associated with arthritis. Uh, types of foods that people can be sensitive to include wheat, sugar, corn, and milk. And when those foods are eliminated, the symptoms of arthritis can be eliminated also. In order to build, build the cartilage in the joints, there's a number of key supplements that can be used. Glucosamine sulfate, 500 milligrams three times a day. Chondroitin sulfate, through injection into the joint, actually helps to rebuild the uh, joint much better than taking it orally because it's such a large compound it's difficult to absorb. Also, MSM, methyl sulfonyl methane, SAMI or s methionine is extremely helpful, anti natural anti-inflammatory. Using 400 milligrams four times a day can really help to decrease inflammation. Also, a, a new product that I've just discovered called undenatured collagen type 2 is extremely helpful at over a long-term period decreasing uh, inflammation in the joints and actually rebuilding the joints. That should be taken at 10 to 40 gram milligrams per day. There's also some natural herbs that work as uh, uh, great treatments for arthritis. Boswellia is an Ayurvedic herb that is extremely powerful anti-inflammatory. White willow bark, which is the precursor or a natural aspirin, works very well as a natural anti-inflammatory. Urinary tract infections are generally caused by bacteria that invade the bladder and the kidneys. Uh, they can also be caused by other reasons as well, such as food allergies, uh, infections by funguses, or sometimes viruses. And the goal of treating urinary tract infections is first un understanding the cause and then boosting the immune system to help the body take care of these infections naturally, if possible. Urinary tract infections affect 10 to 20 percent of all women at some time, uh, at least once a year. So what we want to do is discuss ways that we can naturally improve the body's resistance to urinary tract infections. Diet is essential at preventing these infections. And drinking at least 64 ounces of water that's distilled or from springs is essential in helping to make sure that the bladder is constantly uh, being flushed to prevent the adherence of bacteria to the lining of the bladder. Also identifying underlying causes like food allergies is essential. Uh, food allergies can cause irritation in the bladder that can give symptoms of urinary tract infections like burning when you, a woman urinates, urgency, or frequent urinations. If and if a urinary tract infection is caused by bacteria, there's some natural things that can be done to decrease uh, the risk of recurrence and treat the actual case of the infection. Immune boosters like vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams twice a day, or quercetin, uh, 1,000 milligrams twice a day is essential. Also, zinc picolinate, 60 milligrams a day and vitamin E, 400 international units a day. Vitamin A also, 100,000 international units a day in non-pregnant women is very helpful at improving the immune system function. Uh, but that should only be done for less than a month. Also, natural antibiotics like uva ursi and golden seal actually uh, help to kill bacterial infections. Uva ursi can be taken as a standardized extract in the capsule and taken at 250 to 500 milligrams a day.
Golden Seal at 250 to 500 milligrams a day also works uh, at the same time. Certain uh, fruits like cranberry juice and blueberry juice actually help to decrease the bacteria's ability to adhere to the lining of the bladder. Cranberry juice at 16 ounces a day and blueberry juice 8 ounces a day is very effective at helping to decrease the recurrence of urinary tract infections and can be taken for long periods of time uh, for women that are prone to chronic urinary tract infections. Also identifying risk factors like sexual intercourse uh, is important because urinating after sexual intercourse can help to decrease the recurrence. Once food allergies are identified through either a blood test or allergy testing, once those foods are eliminated, that can also improve the uh, person's immune system and decrease the recurrence of infection. Calcium, potassium, and magnesium citrate at 500 to 1,000 milligrams two times a day is extremely helpful in alkalinizing the urine and that helps the natural antibiotics uva ursi and golden seal to work even more strongly at getting rid of urinary tract infections. I want to live a more deep, deeply spiritual life. But a full life is something that uh, is, uh, is constructive rather than just sitting there uh, waiting for um, the undertaker. <laughs>